Glasgow, I would like to put your hands together and with a round of applause, please welcome Dr. Muhammad al Ashmavi onto the stage who will deliver his message. Assalamu alaikum Jamia. His Excellency, Right Honourable the First Minister of Scotland, Mr. Alex Salmond, Honourable Guests, Brothers and Sisters, as the CEO of Islamic Relief, I'm quite honoured to stand in front of you. And I was telling Mr. Hamza Yusuf, MSB, a minute ago, I didn't know how much I missed by not visiting Scotland before until I came today. I'm quite proud to be here today. I thank you very much for inviting me. I thank you very much for coming. I'm not going to tell you a lot about water, sanitation, donation. The fact that you are here means that you care. I thank you again because all these people are gathering here for one reason, to help those who cannot help themselves. But let me tell you more about the organization that I'm very honored to represent in front of you today. Islamic Relief started in 84. Four doctors were studying in Birmingham. They heard about a famine in Ethiopia at that time. They felt their responsibility towards their brothers and sisters in humanity. And they developed this small organization where they started standing out with small boxes with a slot just to collect some coins. Today it's the largest Muslim non-profit organization in the world with income more than $300 million serving more than 6 million human beings every single year in more than 42 countries. When the tsunami happened in Indonesia 2005, it happened Saturday morning. Sunday night, Islamic Relief was, was on the ground serving people, not going on the TV to say that we're going to go. They were on the ground before the United Nations, before any other non-profit organization in the world. This is how efficient this organization has been. In the beginning of Islamic Relief, we used to count or judge our success by the number of dollars that we are able to collect every year. As the organization matured, we did not think about dollars, rather how many people are we able to help. That was the new judge of success. Now we're taking the organization to the new plateau, where we're saying it is not enough to help somebody. Rather, our new measure of success is going to be how many people are we able to lift out of poverty forever. So when we go somewhere to help a group of human beings, a village, we don't need to go again. We help them enough to reach a point where they do not need any more help. We are inspired by the principles and values of our religion, Islam. It does not mean, however, that we only care for Muslims. The word Islamic in our name means that we read our book, the Quran, and we see in there that whoever saves one life, it doesn't say whether it is Muslim or Christian or Jewish, whoever saves one life, it's as if he saved all mankind. We neither read in our literature about a sinful woman who was entered into paradise because she gave some water to a dog in the desert. Human beings are like that. We care about all the creation of the Lord on earth. Not only people, but also animals. This is how much we care. This is why we were in the United States serving Americans in the uh, Katrina hurricane, which devastated New Orleans. We served there for four years. We were in Haiti, and we still are serving people there, as well as, as I mentioned, 40 other countries. Before I end, I would like to, from the deepest of my heart, thank the government of Scotland for helping so many parts of the world through Islamic Relief, through partnership with Islamic Relief, more than four projects we've been doing together in different parts of the world. Thank you very much for that.
And I'd also like to thank our partner on this night, the World Foundation and Mr. Suhail. We really like to work more with people, with other organizations. We like to partner with every person who has the same values as ours, who cares about people, no matter what their origin, no matter what their religion, no matter what their faith. This is what we try to do. And the different thing, the unique thing about Islamic Relief is, when we go somewhere, as I mentioned, we try to lift them out of poverty, but we also respect them. We go there humble. We see some, sometimes organizations that go there and they say, I am rich, you're poor, I know you don't, so you listen, I'm going to give you the solutions for your problems. That's not how we do it. When we go there, we ask, how can we help you solve your problems? I'd also like to say, Islamic Relief has around 4,000 employees all over the world. But we benefit from the efforts of more than 40,000 volunteers. Without volunteerism, in humanitarian work, there is no way that we can meet our objectives. All we're saying is, we're opening our hands, we're opening our hearts for anyone who would like to help. You help with your money, you help with your time and effort, with your advice, with your ideas. We're always welcoming any kind of help. We're opening the doors for you to reach out for mankind. Thank you very much.